Hello guys, welcome back to another, this is a third look from the new Natasha Denona Midi Xenon palette, which by the way, it's unfortunately limited edition. It's a third look that I've created so far. And this look was inspired by one of my older looks that I've created a while ago. So yeah, I guess I wanted to give this palette another kind of a test run to see what are we dealing with in here. If you haven't watched, I do have a full in-depth video tutorial for this palette where I share specific look and all in-depth um, swatches and everything. So if you haven't, make sure to watch that one as well. Now, even though this look is really deep and intense look, you can also make this look with the lighter shades, not necessarily starting with the black like I will show you. And you can still have pretty beautiful effect. Now, because of a specific color story in the tones, it may be that this one from person to person will um, look different depending on your skin tone. Um, but every time I use this palette, um, this one pulled a little bit more bluish than gray on me. So just one thing to keep in mind that these specific shades can pull a little bit more blue on you. Again, depending on your skin tone. Anyways, I'll say I really do love the look that I've created today. And without any further ado, let's go into the next part of this video. So for today's look, I will start by applying, of course, my base and I'm using base P. Louise in shade 02. Now, first thing I've done is to apply gloss gel eyeliner number 77 in my upper waterline. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this pomade tourmaline from the Nessa Myricks Groundwork palette and since this one is not that dry and thick like the Inglot number 77 I do have more time and well it's a bit easier to work with also gonna take smaller brush just to blend the edges now the thing with the today's spotlight technique is to mark inner and outer corner and of Again, for that I am using creams which I found the most value from them in a sense that they will give me the best results once I of course apply my eyeshadow. Now I can, if I need to go with my Q-tip, slowly erase if anything is out of the line, so to speak. It is the same for the inner corner as well. Just make sure when you're doing your inner corner to not go like super high with this black or super wide it's gonna make your eye look a little bit weird you do want to have like enough amount to work with but at the same time don't spread it too much this area is different than this right here because this one we can blend more but this one as you can see i applied a little bit i spread a little bit um less of a product once it's blended i'm going back again now the next step of course will be to set everything and i'm going in with the shade nice sky with a smaller brush on top of the pomade that we already have in my inner corner and my outer corner as well see how this one grabs beautifully this is not the black shade it is night, night sky it is the deepest shade in this palette First, like I mentioned, I thought I'm gonna miss the black one, but actually it's pretty fine. Um, so the Sposh and Night Sky, even though they may look similar, Sposh is performing lighter on your eyes. So there is a difference between them. And I'm not gonna say they are like super, super necessary, one and the other, but I'm just gonna say that definitely there is a difference on a performance on the eyes, maybe even more than when you just swatch the eyeshadow. No matter if you do swatches of the certain eyeshadow, no matter how they look in a pan, once you apply them on the eye, it may be that they will look differently. So that's the ultimate test when we test any given eyeshadow. Also in my inner corner, I just wanted to say, because this is a pretty dark um, black palette, like I do have fingerprints all over the place, but it's just um, when you work with the black material, it is, it is what happens, like it is more visible, also the eyeshadows around the edges are always, um, the palette will look much more messier than it is. Again, either way, we have to take care um, of our eyeshadows and clean our palette, so 
in a way like it shouldn't be a problem the, the only thing is while you're working it you're gonna have much more visible eyeshadows all over the place with a little bit well i don't need this bigger blending brush i can take the smaller brush and just once again work around the edges make them a little bit softer before i move towards my next shade okay now i am gonna go and use shade contrail i can use this even later but i do like to know that my lighter base is already on so the reason why i am using this shade first is because now when i apply other shades they will mix beautifully with the lighter shade that i'm applying right now it's just gonna make your transition easier you know i know at the moment it looks like too much of a difference but we'll blend everything okay now initially i wanted to go into shade snert but i'll just a tiny bit of this posh shade before I go to this nerd shade like not too much just the edges spread this previous shade so much I'm not even sure if this was necessary anyways we're gonna go into shade snert and you might think that the jump from the nice guy shade to snert is to be good for difference but it is not looking at it like this you would think so but once you blend them they actually act so beautifully the snort was darker it will be too dark let me just focus on one side first so here i added shade snort on the edges at the moment we are still in a phase where everything looks harsh and now i'm taking a little bit bigger blending brush with a little bit of snort shade actually almost nothing on my brush and just kind of slowly start to working around the edges to make everything super super soft and now the previous shade that we applied which was contrail um will help to blend everything easier rather than um blending this snert shade which is deeper transitional shade into the skin so this step gonna take a little bit of my time but i really need to take some time to blend this everything in it's gonna make my job easier later when i do apply shimmers and everything they're gonna well they're gonna blend in easily going in again with the shade snert and adding it as much as i need now i want to move on to a fun part which is going to be all of this glimmery shimmery center and usually i would do this with the pillowies base zero which i don't have at the moment so i'm gonna mix inglots number 76 with is it 76 yeah with the pillowies base zero two i just wanted to make this base a little bit more creamier because you know how those inglet gels are super super heavy and harsh so starting from the center but at the same time we cannot disrupt everything that we have already so while doing this make sure to end this light color right next to edges of the previous shade i'm constantly um have to be kind of a quick with this one and here's the thing i know at the moment this looks a bit rush oh we'll blend everything also the center needs to stay um open all the way from your lash line to the brows the reason why i'm doing this and why is this so big of a contrast is because now when i apply lighter shades they will appear true to the color if i went just with my skin tone and applied the same technique that i am about to apply then well it wouldn't be that much vibrant and strong in a contrast obviously you can do that you can skip this but you won't get um the same result in a sense that um it will be like this vibrant also what i'm going to do is to apply a little bit nyx glitter primer just on top of this white base or should i or should i say light base because this is not completely white i did mention how the toppers don't work the best and they kind of a crack in certain spots when you apply this heavy of a base but we are working mainly with the shimmers and i will apply toppers last so that will not be an issue now one shade that i said i could 
kind of work with because of the most light choices from this palette is the shade Rhyme. But now when I think about it, for today's look, it's necessary. So it's good that I have this one because out of them all, it is the lightest and it's not a topper. So it will give like um, true light color, white color. So now I am glad that we have them. One thing that maybe concerns a lot of you is how these light shades are kind of a too close to repeat but the thing is even though they look the same their um, texture is different so therefore the roll is different like you can't have this with a different um this finish with a different light shade okay little bit fusing spray and going in with the stellar shade right away underneath my eyebrow in the center this one is much more as a topper and it blends beautifully with your skin like you can see the difference how light this is and how this one it's much more blending with your skin so to speak now i'm going in with this sadness shade oh this is such a beautiful shade i think this is definitely one of my favorites and this one will go on the edges of the previous shade that we used when we made our guideline so just the edge same here just the edge transitioning it a little bit towards this light wow this and this right away transforms everything and again when we blend everything together it's just gonna be it's gonna give this beautiful halo effect and as you can see we have huge transition here and i am going in with our next shade which is superionic and i am adding this one as a transition between these two because again the contrast that we have is just too much now let me apply a little bit of gray shade because that one um it's a good middle tone shimmer for this that will help connect everything also we are still not done with the center we do need to apply more toppers now with a flat brush i did mix neve and stellar shade these two toppers and applying them right in the middle and now we can see their true potential after everything we have underneath i know it's a lot of layering a lot of layering but the only way to have this kind of effect it's not just to blend one shade next to each other but rather to layer different textures and products underneath now for my lower lash line what i'm gonna do of course first i had to apply my pillow's base underneath we're not going to apply eyeshadow on a bare skin the next step is to um, again apply the tourmaline base in my waterline and a little bit around my lash line and the first shade from the palette that i am using i'm going back with the night sky so basically i'm repeating what i already have on my eye and just on the outer edge and it needs to be connected to everything else now you can see here that it's not perfectly connected so just gonna smudge take a smaller blending brush just to get rid of any imperfections just to blend them or if necessary you can use q-tip now i'm gonna add a little bit of the same shade right here as well now with a snort shade i'm gonna go next to this one and also on the edges because it is really dark color and we need to make it a little bit more lighter i'm also gonna take smaller blending brush and just work with a clean brush on the edges i'm wiping i'm wiping it like this just because it's clean now when i think about this um just because we have light in the center i don't want to use any better this blend i don't want to use any shimmers on my lower lash line we'll see once i finish my whole makeup if i'm gonna change anything but for now i'm just gonna apply some basic liner right here and apply my lashes and i will be back now to conclude this video like i said this was my third look with this palette i'll probably create another one while collecting all of the products that i've used for this month so I'll make sure no matter what look i do i think i think i'm gonna incorporate this palette within that um i understand that this color story not might be for like favorite for everyone i was super excited when i saw this one coming out because this is definitely something the color story that i love to work with you know how much i rave about having the difference um, in between light and dark shades like having difference that will 
help me to control everything else that I'm doing with my looks. Now, despite the fact that we might think that here we do have some pretty close similarities, the thing is because of the depth difference, it does give us a lot of control to work with. I kept on saying how I love to have a difference within certain palettes. Now, this one definitely, definitely has it. And it gives me ability to control everything else in between when it comes to different shades, whether I'm using certain transition color or the deeper color, I can always mix them. So as my final thought, I'll say that I'm so happy to have this palette in my collection. The only thing that I do miss that this is apparently limited edition and I don't know what's gonna happen with this. If you are leaning towards this color story, I'll say go for it because the quality is good and you can manipulate a lot of the shades in here and also you, you do have a different textures which is really important especially if you are doing a little bit advanced look like this so certain shades even though they look for example a lighter um they do can be a bit more transparent just because they are having texture of a topper so they're not necessarily you know like straight in your face shiny and really bright i think this is everything i wanted to share for today's um video as always thank you so much for watching and if you do enjoy this content please give it a thumbs up as it really helps for this channel and also i do have a couple of more exciting palettes that are already waiting here as you know i may know actually i did purchase a whole pat McGrath collection which i didn't still review everything and i do love to go in depth review with every single eyeshadow palette so stay tuned for that one also for some new makeup releases that we have and before you leave make sure to watch this video and guys i will see you in my next one thank you bye